Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I want to follow up a little bit more on um, changing out the control board for the laser. So, in the last episode, we took a look at flashing uh, a modified version, a slightly modified version of Garble, onto the Arduino over there. There's the CNC shield. And I kind of wanted to leave it like this um, so you kind of get an idea what you're getting into if you're going to change the brain of this thing. So you need to know a little bit about what you're doing uh, to make this brain swap. I, I wouldn't I would definitely I wouldn't consider this advanced, but it's definitely fully intermediate um, in task. So, uh, but before we get going, one of the things I want to point out. So you notice a couple shields and uh, Arduinos laying around. One of the things, as I mentioned in the other video, I, I get a lot of questions about um, flashing Arduino uh, uh, with, with Garble. And I get a lot of things, hey, you know, I flashed it, but it doesn't work. I loaded Blinky, and Blinky works. Um, not all Arduinos are made equal, uh, especially the Chinese ones. So I, 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 I sometimes have an issue with... Um, uh, you know, non-brand name, if you can say, Arduino's running uh, Garble. So, uh, you know, if you're going to do it seriously, I would suggest getting, um, you know, an actual one by, uh, I forget the company's name that produces them. Uh, but anyways, um, or else have a number of them on hand. I got like a dozen of these Chinese ones around. So this one wouldn't work. Um, so I got another one, and it works. Now this one runs blinky. I can connect to it, but it does not run the shield properly so um, and I even tried uh, swapping shields so I've got a bunch of these because you can get them off eBay and I'll see about putting a link down below to these for under 20 bucks for a complete set so you get a little bit of what you pay for but I mess around with this stuff enough it's worth having you know half a dozen of these laying around and it's not really that much money so anyways so I've got it all wired up over there one of the things I've had to do over here and pipe buried in this rat's nest, I've had to build um, a little voltage uh, inverter, logic inverter for the spindle pin. Now you remember in the last episode we took out the variable pin so we don't have to use the S codes for um, the spindle and also it gives me a true either on or off. So you can see the meter over here and uh, you know I'm running 5 volts, the laser's turned off you know it's, it's not activated and so if I issue the M4 command um, it'll bring the slow turn the laser on so it requires that it's just an NPN uh, transistor and a couple of resistors I'll put a little bit more about that when I do this do up kind of notes at the end or if you have immediate questions hit me up down below uh, because I think that the biggest thing is I hit a bias the uh, base of the transistor I think with a 1k instead of a 10k to get it to work is 10k wasn't allowing it to pull down enough so anyways I've got this set up this all works and so it's actually pretty good I've got the um, uh, end, end stops wired in I don't have all the code done on the end stops now one of the things I will forewarn you probably 50 percent of this project has been finding the right values to use in garble to make this work um, I won't go into all in this episode but at the end again I will uh, as I did in the laser diode build of the, that laser, I will document all the um, garble settings. But you know, for these motors to work on these lasers, uh, it has to be set right, or they grind and, and complain. So, if you hook it up and use standard out of the box uh, garble settings, they'll kind of move, uh, but they'll make a lot of noise and chatter. Uh, you got to get the acceleration and all that right in. in I've done a lot of research on the internet and a lot of experimenting to get to where that is. So that's actually been one of the harder parts. The wiring has actually been pretty straightforward. Uh, at the end of the day, I'll probably solder this up on a little bit of a breadboard and maybe 3D print a little box for it or something because also it uses the 5 volts and we talked about that in a couple episodes back that come off the uh, come out of the power supply and go to that control board. I'm going to also use that to power the pointing lasers in there, or the aiming lasers, and, and make it available for some other things, uh, especially since I'm powering the uh, Arduino from the USB port now. Um, so anyways, um, let me show you how it works. So I'm going to move the camera over, so let's move over that way. 
Okay, so I moved the camera. Now I have this at a bit of an angle because I want you to be able to see the meter as well as what's going on here. So this is measuring the logic state right now of that little inverter I built and it's going to control, it's going to watch the firing of the laser and then you're going to see it there. It's just going to make a small little um, uh, box. So I'm going to send the code now. So you see the, it's dropped and now it's starting its cut. Um, again, it's running rather slow only because of the um, the G-code is for the diode laser cutter, so it's meant to cut out a little square, and here you go. Uh, the one thing you'll notice that it does is it, uh, before I stick my finger in there, let me turn turn off the laser uh, for safety, uh, but one of the things you know, it, it for some reason fires the laser briefly before it starts its run. I still have to figure that out. Um, I may, in my post processor, put it in M5 um, and see if that stops it. So I still have a little bit more experimenting with the pro post processor um, because, again, I'm using the code from the other laser, and again, I'm using M5 and M4 to to trigger the laser. So, anyways, uh, so far it's all worked out pretty good. I'm I'm actually very happy. I I tell you, I cannot tell you how relieved I am being freed of that laser draw nonsense. So. Uh, uh, because it just was too flaky. I like the concept of being able to pull it in, but it didn't work half the time and, you know, didn't line up. And, oh, God, it was it was almost as bad as the Da Vinci. So, uh, which they're doing great, too, since I've reflashed them to Repetier. You know, love the machines now. A um, lot less frustration, just still hating ABS a bit. Anyways, um, from here where I'm going to go is I'm going to now tidy this stuff up because again this is why I wanted you to see this first is how this started out now the good thing is I've got a lot of extra wire here and what I'm going what I've decided to do is I'm going to bundle this up into a bus run it through the back of the machine and actually drill some holes in the back of the machine 3d print another Arduino mounter use that one and and actually bolt it to the outside of the machine and back and then run the all this wiring in a harness out um, that opening in the back and then you know mount the Arduino and shield right above it and that would get better airflow and if there's something up with it you know I can easily get to it so uh, anyways that's probably what I'm going to do rather than trying to fight trying to get it mounted back inside like I was talking before so hey anyways if you're finding this interesting give it a thumbs up I'm hoping to um, maybe cut a little bit of ground here. I've seen I've seen a number of these modifications on the internet. Most of them are using the smoothie board. Uh, you know, it's probably a great board. I've never worked with it. I've played a lot with these guys, so very much used to it. And, and these are sub-20 bucks. So, you know, outside of my time, it's, it's going to cost me hmm, maybe 20 bucks to convert this machine to actually a usable machine from that crappy Moshi draw board or whatever the heck. Uh, situation I had so I, I mean you really can't beat it so um, and I don't think actually using the the only thing I think the smoothie board would have saved me is potentially having that inverter because I think on the smoothie you can flip the pins I'm not sure and uh, the spindle uh, pin and then um, obviously it, it's a little bit better documented as to the settings but once I've I, I, I've got 90 percent of the, the garble settings figured out so I'll document those and put those on the interweb and uh, you know so if you want to do this you'll be able to follow along and, and have a whole lot he less headache than I did because I tell you what if I had everything I'm going to end up with and do another one of these it would literally probably take me simply a couple hours and most of it is going to be time is to rework this rat's nest of wiring um, so because again I've crimped new I've reused the uh, the uh, motor connectors connected right up to the CNC board. I didn't have to recrimp those. I did have to do DuPont connectors on a lot of the other ones. That took a little bit of time. Not bad. I got a DuPont crimper. Uh, definitely suggest one of those if you don't have one. And then the other piece was trying to figure out, uh, well, I shouldn't say figure out, but just establish some of the logic levels of, of the board and what I was working with just to make sure I got it right. Um, 
And so that's all sorted. It all worked as I thought it would. So anyways, hey, thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.